to the republic, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome. All right, I'll do uh, it. Thank you. Um, Trustee Page. Here. Trustee McGovern. Here. Trustee Robinson here. Um, Supervisor Hewitt. Here. Uh, Clerk Polowitz. Here. Low, uh, Highway Commissioner Young. Here. Okay. I'm sorry, I'm just making my notes here. And in the room, we have Lisa Rose, Ruby Smith, Michelle Jasmine Porter, Porter? Yep. and Michelle, Michelle Spivak. And on Zoom, we have Greg Walnut. Is that the only person? Attorney Wysocki had tried to get on. Oh, there we are. Okay, I think I've got the attendance. All right, so the first was item number four, discussion of survey public, results. Of public comment. I'm sorry, public, is there public comment? Is anybody in the room with public comment? Nobody? Do we have anybody online with public comment? Here's that. And any public comment online? Nothing? Okay. Hearing none, um, we'll move on. Um, uh, attorneys remote attorneys. Okay, so item number four, discussion of survey results. So I just wanna say that the survey was created because the committee was hearing reports of problems in the office Providing the survey allowed us a wider read on the situation and such surveys are common in teams and with only nine employees in this office, I really wasn't including the food pantry as much because that's kind of going undergoing its own transition right now. With only nine employees, the office is really too small to be considered anything but one big team, okay? And so one big team to me needs to work together. Now, that being said, I'm really not prepared to talk about the survey results because I sent the email out to 10 employees and I've received 18 responses. So it's no good. Okay. So yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, so it was forwarded? Or? It was, I, somebody, you, I don't know how the extras got in there, but they're in there, which means we really can't discuss what was Found. Besides, it just closed a couple of minutes ago, and I don't have access to my computer, so I can't show everything. So that was the purpose of the survey. It, it, I, I included the committee members. Opinion, like I wanted to know, I, I sent it to you guys too, just for you to see the questions. Did you see any problems with it at all? I didn't. I take um, environment surveys quite a bit at, in an in a academic setting. Um, uh, they are administered to rate myself and they're administered to rate my administration. So I'm not very familiar with it. And I read over, I didn't take it. Right. So no, I don't know if any other that. trustee, but I felt like it was very just, you know, and then that's what let's hear your voice. Yes. And, and why would you rate this? It was pretty it, standard, I thought. So, okay. okay. Right. Mayor? Yes. Um, I got the survey as well as email. And I, Honestly, I was a bit apprehensive about it, primarily because I had a question on the true anonymity of it all. Because we, like you mentioned, we are a small group and everybody knows everybody, uh, vernacular, their language, their, the things they talk about. So any simple deduction, you can pretty much figure out who's saying what and who's the, who the respondent is. Mm -hmm. And, you know, with that being said, I didn't I didn't complete the survey, okay. but I was curious as to who created it, uh, the questions. And I did. But then, uh, like, maybe had eighteen results. I don't know how that happened. I, I don't either. 
as of well, it's interesting I would, I would because like to have known both, so as of, uh, of it. I would too. I mean, uh, as of Thursday, we had six results, and then Thursday night, one more came in, seven results, and then on Friday, all of a sudden, we've got nine extra came in overnight. And we, I mean, I even brought the employees, but we don't have that many employees, so the result is invalid. Uh, if you just do the first seven or whatever, yeah. they have well. just do it by date. If you have experience with this, I would like to. No, no, okay. not with this specifically. Does, uh, does does anybody have experience with that? Maybe so, Connor and Gallagher. Connor and Gallagher um, have the ability to, if if is is warranted, they can do a follow up survey and have it be um, all inclusive of a variety of different um, components. Uh, is that at a cost? Well. Per, it, per hour yeah, yeah. and so it doesn't um i think that it could be worked out within less than an hour's worth, worth of work so that's why we have well the whole idea was to get a read on what was going on in the office because employees have been coming out to the committee with some concerns and most of us on the committee had spoken to most of the employees in the office um, and we, it's a different thing speaking face to face versus sitting down at a computer anonymously. You could say whatever you want them, and it is anonymous. I have no idea who who provided what results. Um, anyway, so yeah, I'm sorry. I don't have you no, 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 that's. I, I thought part of this <laughs> survey was follow up some of the things you heard yes. in the meetings with the boys. Yes. I thought it was a basically a two-step process. Okay, we're going to meet with folks, we're going to understand, and then we're going to do focus the survey results sort of on the issues that they identify. So I, I understand where you're going. It sounds like the results are not of use in a context that, the we, that you and we envision it to be to be one committee. Exactly. So. How did you deliver it? Uh, email. Sorry. I or used email? Yeah. Uh, township email. So maybe maybe it would be best for like a survey marking or you know we did it this way because it didn't cost anything. Right. Yeah, I've never done anything like this before. My son just finished up his program. He was a, a student and a research assistant, mm -hmm. and he said, "Well, when I have to do this, this you know I have to read my professor or my students are reading me." Right. And so he sat me down and we went through the whole thing. And so we just use Google because it's free. Yeah. You know. Um. But going forward, I agree. I I think that if we're going to do a survey. Unfortunately, we'll have to use funds. I think survey of money is maybe minimal. Is it okay? It's yeah. free. Okay. Yeah. It's free. There's it's a free, free version. Free. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's and that we only get like ten questions, but it's free. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, so that's where we're at. And sorry, the advantage that that would limit the scope of the people who can respond if we use survey monkey. This that is my understanding. You would just send it, I'm not fully versed, but you would just send it to the people that, you know, if you wanted the current employees to do it, you could send it straight to them and then they would be the ones to respond. Autumn yeah. zooming in. I don't know if she's trying to get it right now, but I did ask about events. Do we think there's value in a survey and we should revisit how we're going to deliver the survey? Follow up meetings with the employees and I'm not sure. I think follow up meetings with the employees okay. would be better. Um, okay. Scheduling them as soon as possible. I'm away next week. Um, around everybody else's schedules. I yeah, I, I'd like to sit down and, and speak to them again. And okay. my workplace we have a comment box. Sometimes that works, sometimes it doesn't. That's a good idea. But too. at times it does resolve issues proactive before they get larger. And that's kind of how I view the survey. It's kind of a comment to sort something out or communication before it gets right. to be a miscommunication. Thank you. Okay. So sorry. Any other questions or comments about that topic? So comment box would be nice. Yeah, a comment box, sure. Yeah, that would be nice if it was up in the break room or something like that. Everybody goes in the break room. That's a good idea. That's not a mess. Y'all go talk to whatever. Okay. That would be a good idea. Thank you. All right. Okay. Um, agenda item number five discussion of the handling of personnel files. 
So, can you tell us where are the personnel files right now? What state are they in? Who has possession of them? Who has access to them? Because I've been told the clerk has them. And the clerk says she doesn't have them. I've been asked to give information to you that I know you should already have because I've been being paid for two years. Um, can we have any idea of what is going on right now with the personnel files? I received emails from you that you're auditing our personnel files. It, it, yes? So let's rewind this um, because on April uh, 12th, um, as we were going through and preparing for that meeting and understanding that you all were, were going to get the personnel files, I think here's the part of the issue is that the definition of personnel files um, is needs to be explained because in the past, the personnel files were the um, combination of documents that were kept in um, the former finance director's office, uh, meaning that that was a conglomeration of everything that had been um, collected throughout the many years um, that was deemed to be um, in their personnel files. And so those were originally all in Bill Green's office. And then after April 12th, and this is the only time when the, um, the files were divided up and they were done, divided up with um, the operations manager, um, and they were given to the clerk colleagues. And what is in the, the piece that needs to be understood was there's six components to the personnel files, meaning that there's Connor and Gallagher instructed us in the audit and we gave everyone the information before we were doing it, how it was gonna be done, but there's six different types of information. When it comes to, I think what you were talking about is the I-9, um, the I-9 information was kept haphazardly in each of the different files. Okay, and so at that audit on April on April 12th, um, there was a file that was created that was only the I-9s because that's what we were expected, expected to do. Um, at that time, there was um, um, all of their documentation when it came to identification and everything um, because there's three different categories of identifications that had to be collected. And all of them were put into this one, like I said, file um, that was put aside and that everything was and at that time was left into the same cabinet that was uh, the one that is in that same room. Um, so there's from that subdivision, there was the personnel files that included um, resumes. Um, there's the exact categories that Connor and Gallagher defined. Um, there's a listing of them that we can... Um, no, I have it printed out. It's, I, right. Is, so there's the, right, there's the medical ones, the payroll, the benefits. Um, May I ask a question? This is trusty guys. Sorry for interrupting. And I I'm sorry, I can't be there presently. It's the middle of the day for me here. Um, but anyway, what I, I think it's great that you're performing this audit, but we had agreed and we had we had all agreed that several months ago, the files would be kept with the clerk's office. So if that means that we needed to continue to conduct the audit on that premise, those files needed to be in the clerk's office and to continue to withhold them is now starting to look obstructive. Uh, trustee Geist, um, what I'm trying to explain and what I'm, I'm explaining is that that day, the person or the next day, you received a, a whole lot of boxes of files. Of the, there's two big boxes of files. One was with all the resumes. It was a smaller box. Yes, that's and then there was a bigger box with all of the personnel files all in one single box. And so that was what was collected throughout the years, which was known. All we knew, we had decided at that time to be the personnel files. Now um, there's, so the point being is, is everything was given to the clerk college. We had, um, when there was a new person that, two new people that had come on, I gave her those files. So all of all of that has been continuously going to the clerk. When it comes to the I-9, and this is where in the last month we were picking up because we know that knew that you all wanted this done, um, was that we were just trying to make sure that that it was collected because frankly, didn't the accountant say that we needed to 
Um, and a number of people said that in order to have employees working, we need to have the documentation. Your Dana, do you believe that um, we needed to collect the identification or part of this is a difference in opinion of whether the identification needed to be collected because there is a whole idea that it doesn't need to be collected, that we needed to just view it. And so in the past, that's what was done. Bill just viewed your identification. He didn't take a copy of it. And so we were missing that. And so when that original audit was done, I that all the only thing that um, that uh, the operations manager and I did that first day was just so give the differentiate what needed to go into each of those different categories because they needed to all go to the clerk that day. So that's to be clear, it was done that day and timely because you all had requested it to be done that day and that time. So what's bill in the township office? The I nines which is a part of the, the file that we've been told needs to be kept with payroll. The benefits and the payroll, they're all in one locked cabinet that um, has been in the, um, uh, is in the finance, uh, in the bookkeeper's office right now. That is, I just went in it recently because I had to add in those, uh, those uh, new people. And when I did that, then I could tell that it's like, well, this isn't everything we spoke about. This sounds, you know, pretty darn confusing. I think it's really pretty simple. Um, I know your terminology for personnel probably is a little bit different than I think maybe what was intended. The personnel file, to make it easy, should be, it should be your employment records. It should mm -hmm. be your payroll records and your benefits. So every, your, also your review, your, your performance reviews. That could go into your employment, right? You know, so your mm -hmm. personnel file should have three files into it. And it should have those three. Employment, uh, you know, if you have a review, you have a raise, you're, you're no longer working there, the whole bit. So that's your employment records. Then it goes your payroll records. So every everything regarding payroll should go into that file. And the third one are your benefits. You, I do not have full employment records, and I definitely do not have payroll or um, payroll or benefits. Okay, so to be clear, at the as the count, Connor and Gallagher gave us direction to do these, this is what they, the pro, the professional human resource people, said is in there. It should be in a personnel file. Yes, the employment application, the resume. That may be true, but but Supervisor Hewitt, we were very specific about the records that we wanted. So regardless of what they advise you, we asked for specific files to be on record with the clerk. And this, again, feels very obstructive and circumventive because now we're, we're talking in circles and we're giving long explanations for just something very simple, which is to hand the files over to the clerk. So everything on this page, I should have. You want the benefits more. file, the payroll files, the confidential files, the medical yes, files. Yes, and the fact that we're having this conversation again almost feels like we're having a communication problem because we've said this over and over again in each meeting and spoke on it at exhaustion to the point that this again feels like we have we have milked through, following through with this simple request by the elected officials entrusted by this community. Um, I just wanna say that part of this is a definition issue. And because as we've been defining, um, the Connor and Gallagher who are our human resource experts, your Dana, can we define, I mean, I, I've been trying to give what has been requested and I'm trying to make sure that a from a payroll. I mean, the operations and the bookkeeper can you know let us know from a payroll and from a benefits access perspective. Are you able to um, function without those records on hand, or is that something that you refer to regularly? Um, to the extent you're asking my opinion on it, I thought that when um, the board made a decision about turning the personnel files over to the clerk. I, I thought there was a pretty comprehensive list there um, that, was, that was listed at the time. So, I mean, that, that's what I think needed to be turned over to the clerk because that was the, the board's wish. Um, I, I mean, I understand that there's certainly documents that 
whoever's running payroll and benefits need need at least copies of so that they can do it correctly. But um, my, I mean, my understanding is that um, the board went through that, it went through what documents needed to be sent to the clerk previously. And that's, um, you know, what the board had um, voted on, last, um, I don't know, last month. Dana, while we're on the line, can you draw up that list of documents? Because I'm pretty sure we agreed to that as well. And I'm, I'm trying my best to make sure that we do that. Um, I, I, I will be able to take a look at it. I, I'm, I'm, and I apologize. I, I was at a, another meeting this morning and I'm in transit. So um, I'm a little limited right now because I'm on the phone. Um, but um, I mean, if you, if you want, I can look at the um, meeting minutes or, or, you know, the, I mean, the, the list that was discussed at the meeting, it was, I, I remember there was a motion and there was a very specific list. So um, I, I believe Madam Clerk might be in a better position to to pull up the minutes from that meeting. Yeah, I, I, I appreciate the offer. I don't think we need your time. To, to I, okay, no problem. Lisa Rose, Do you have your hand up? I was just going to say that we, when I started, we had a checklist of all the, the things that were required for the file. So mm -hmm. I don't know if that has changed since, but basically we would go down the list and make sure everything was in the file. But we refer to those files all the time for issues with payroll or you know issues with payment of like benefits and things like that. Mm -hmm. So I have stuff that need to go into files that I don't have or are just sitting in there because I haven't had a chance to go through and see them. Mm -hmm. And dealing with medical records, we don't divide up everything at all. We just keep it in one file because that is your file. So I, that's just my experience with it. So what was proposed at the time was that they would be accessible in the clerk's office if you needed access to Well, that's just a lot. It's kind of, it, that's good, but it's kind of a long walk. We'd have to make a list and go, I mean, it's not as convenient, that's all. Okay. And, and part of, first thing- How frequently is that really necessarily happening? Same you guys way. should know what the personal records are for the people who've already been employed there. Unless someone is a new employee, how frequently is that really a problem? It is because basically you have to go back to like what, you know, when, when, when we were finding things that were incorrect from before that have progressed into this, we have to go back in time into the file. And then at right now, I think that Gerald is getting a lot of the HR stuff. So I'm not sure who's got confirmation. So, he, so but he could keep a copy. He could keep a copy of the W-9 forms in his office. Yeah. That's so that if there is a payroll question, it could be resolved in that way. Correct. Recording in progress. Yeah. But we don't go through the, all that other stuff, the day-to-day -day and the payroll issues and things like that. But when they're new, we need that quite a bit and we're constantly kind of making sure things are correct. Making sure, you know, because the benefits don't start for like a- Right, but that's not an ongoing problem where accessibility is an everyday or an every week issue. It, it could be alleviated by you making a copy. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So I guess I just want us to be solution oriented. To me, this feels like we we we've now stalled another four or five months to turn over something that rightfully should be held in the Turk's office. And it seems like each time we meet, there's a reason why it hasn't happened. And that reason is not really a qualifier to me. Make a copy. If that's something you need on a regular basis, make a copy of it. Like that's a, let's be solution oriented. Let's, let's not get caught up in the bureaucracy of, well, then there's this form and we got to audit this form and that form. Let's just do it. Let's just get it done. We're spending way too much time talking about this. I'm talking more about notes about things that we've had to fix, you know, all that, you know, minutiae things like that. So if you want, we can keep our own file in there, but it's kind of nice to be able to have access to files so that we can kind of make sure that we have everything all of our if you want the plain old files of like all the employment files, that's fine. But we need to know like the date of hire, if somebody leaves the date of termination, you know, all of that stuff. And and the clerk is not available to answer those questions or to provide those documents in the in the infrequency that that would happen. Well, I don't. She's not in the office. Her office so we time. we've already kind of established what we're supposed to do. And we're supposed to have a, a deputy, you know, to be able to, if you need to go in there. I am not saying that, uh, you know, again, any any papers, any files, anything that's in this building that's township, I'm supposed to be the keeper of it. So anything you have is really a copy 
of it. Do you know what I'm saying? Because I am the keeper of the records. Okay. So so if you want to make copies of anything, go ahead. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So Hold you're your automatically files. getting them from certain places? I'm not getting them is what I'm saying. Okay. You know, so. So I think here's the issue is we, we just need to, from my perspective, the day of that meeting, when we got those definitions of what was required, I went through everything that we had and we gave them our, our understanding of what we had, we gave them to her. And we've given you, I, I mean, I, so if there is an honest you know, confusion of, okay, if you want all your payroll, all of your benefits, which we did not include at the time, or it wasn't our understanding that they were included. I've gone through some of the minutes as we've been talking and they're not defined. So I, I think I'll go through the, min, the minutes of the meeting to make sure that they're being done. But there, the reality is, is in the other piece is, is that the definition could also include some pieces that are um, boxes that we've stored in the garage or boxes that have been stored in the, um, in the food pantry closet for de years, decades. Um, and so for, to be clear, I mean, th whether there's a, a place or a, a topic of maybe a lease of a public storage facility that is one of those these areas because there's a whole lot of documents that are stuck in my office right now uh, because people were worried about um, whether it was um, with a GA or, or some some kind of a um, confidentiality issue of something in those files. There's a lot of them. Again, we've had this conversation again and again. We all understand what was supposed to be turned over. If there was any question, it should have been asked weeks, months ago. Let's just get this done, please. And let's get this done in the next 40 business hours. Okay, so there's a, a like literally a stack of boxes that is about this big to this big in my, in my office. But that's old. We don't need that. The, that, that all has personal information um, well, that all current. has... For, for, employees for all sorts of different, it's not just employees. I mean, there's a lot of, my point is, is that from a, a documentation, um, we don't have a retention, document retention policy that needs to be worked on. Um, but right now there's a whole lot of documents that we've stored in a variety of different places, mostly in people's offices, um, in the locked. Okay. That's a very fair point that you're making. We want the files for the current existing staff and of and anybody who has left in the last year, how about that? Yeah. Would that be helpful? Yes, but we have okay. So I guess again, I'm trying to say okay. To be super clear, we have tried to give this, and and to be again very clear, you want the payroll, the benefits, the I nine, the uh, medical files, and the confidential files. We'll give them to you. We just need to make what sure that they're all. What else would be missing out of what else would be missing out of the personnel files? That was the, everything. That's everything. Okay. So the, the and see That's the why we have HR professionals said okay. that the personnel files did not include all of that. They they had said in the audit professionally that the other pieces should be taken out and should be documented in d different places. So if you all, again, that's what the HR professionals put in writing to you all for months. However, they're not township. They're an employment. They're, there's a difference there. So we did speak to this. And you had a question? I was just so Lisa, can Lisa Rose, can you make copies of what you think you need to have? And can we give all the other things to the clerk's office? I mean, then like the files, I have to figure out like what's in there. I, I I just don't have I don't know where anything is anymore just since I'm you know, and, and in all of this time, all multiple hands have been in these files. So we don't even know if the integrity of the files is intact anymore. I've been given, I was given the I-9 file after it had already been audited by someone other than Diana Gerald in our office. And when I was provided that to audit on May 25th, there were files missing that were originally in there. So I don't know where those are at now. That's exactly what I'm referring to. And I find that very convenient. And I did bring it up to Gerald that there were files missing. And what is this? The, what was the solution to? Has everything been located? Do we know? It, well, all the files had files missing. For example, there were quite a few board members who didn't even have I nine. Mm -hmm. um, really, mostly all of you. Um, and that's because and, the process that right, originally we really didn't have a process. What we did was took the files that we had and tried to sort and segregate 
based on the list that we had gotten from the people who were guiding us, Connor and Gallagher, and submit those to whom we thought should have had what, and then we had to keep everything else together. And I think Michelle was right. We did have big files that had a bunch of papers in them, but we had to sort that stuff out because there were things in there that um, perhaps did not fall in that list of things that we had on there. As a matter of fact, we even stapled the list on each file to make sure that it was enumerated as to which documents goes into which files. So if anything was missing, it had already been missing. No, those original files had documents. No, there were background checks that were in files that are now no longer in those files. There's people who have witnessed this. It is something that has been communicated over the weeks. So the files have been edited by somebody unscrupulously. And this is what happens when we don't have this request honored weeks ago. The integrity of the files is now impacted. Trustee Gates, yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, well, that's what I was saying. saying that there were files that were in the original file. They audited them on April 12th, and now those documents are not, I don't know where they're at, because when I was provided the I-9 file to audit that should have had those documents that were originally in there, they are we, they were not in there when they were provided to me. And the only files were I-9 documents. I found them, I found them um, as we were going through like document retention and I found current personal employee files that had been moved from Gerald's office to the back office. So there are files that are, that were for current employees that were still not audited. And the because there was, the key file. Was, it was, it was, I feel like very haphazard. There was not a list of who's our current employees. What do we have in these current files before we separate them into multiple files? Now I don't know where at half of the original documents that were in that one file are at. But at one point in time, you saw an I-9 file with all of the employees. No, like I'm saying that they that they're in those individual files. There were I-9 documents that were in their original file. For everyone. For, for not for everyone, but I knew that there were documents for those people. Okay. But and but then after they had been audited, they weren't there. They were not there. Okay. And I was provided with one file that should have had all of those documents in it, and those and half of those documents were not in that file. That should have been the only file for I nine. So you saw in the original file I nine for employee X. Yeah. So like that one file had an I nine with a passport and a driver's license. And then after that had been audited, uh -huh. they put all of the I nine files into one file, but half of those documents that were originally in the individual file right. were not in there. So you saw one for employee X and one was off the solid again. It was one. not in there, correct. So was at that same time, was there a uh, double audit? And this would have been when it would have been really helpful for Connor and Gallagher to have been paid to originally have done this audit, but that wasn't what was requested. Um, at that same time, um, Michelle, was it gone, or did you go through Clerk Polowitz's original files? Because there was only two places where they went. They either went into the group of files in there, or they went to Clerk Polowitz. Those were the only two places where they went. I don't know why I'm being asked. I was that because I was given the I nine file to audit after it had already been audited mm -hmm. by Alexia. So okay. I don't know where the original documents had went because they had already been audited. So what so I'm saying is that they file that should have had all those documents, they did not have those documents. Okay, and so what I'm saying is that um, there was, again, okay, I again, I'm, I'm not trying to argue with you. Yeah, you want to pay someone else to come in and look at No, I know. I agree completely. This is something that that this is a service that's available to us through our insurance provider already that we don't have to pay thousands and thousands of dollars for. Um, I, I, I'm I don't agree with paying them to do this at all. There has to be an audit done now. Yes, because it sounds like it's yes. clear where the files are and if they're complete. Can we evaluate? The challenge is, Trustee Robinson, is where is the culpability for the missing documents? And maybe they just got and this. And we were concerned. I, I want to. I want to point out, and I don't. I, and I don't want to make up this point at nauseum, but we. It was pointed out that there was such concern about the integrity of of the elected officials or the elected clerk having these files in a locked cabinet in her office, and yet we've had anyone 
with any level or, or lack thereof of security clearance, accessing these files, omitting files, editing files, the integrity of the files is not accurate, but we were worried about the clerk holding these files in a lock cabinet. I just want to point that out. Um, Trustee Geist, that's not the case. That has not been what has happened. Um, and I would welcome, or I think everyone would be, or at least not everyone, um, we're trying to, again, have more locks and more um, security than we've ever had control over that, meaning that we've actually labeled all the locks. We've uh, made sure that everybody had the locks to all of their- Things are lost. Uh, this is- right. there's, there's two right. places. Yes. My point is that you don't even know that if you haven't gone through the other files. You don't know that they're not in there. So I think that part of this is that there need, if you if you want to have an objective um, audit of this, that they, it's not that expensive. Um, but if, and, and we've again, tried to do as much as that we possibly can. Well, it's uh, a little late for that audit because we've already had multiple personnel in the files editing the files. There hasn't been editing of any files. Uh, trustee Geist, or I have not edited a single file. I don't believe maybe you. maybe I, I didn't say you edited the files, but the files have been edited. There are files that were in those folders at one point. There are no longer there, and no one knows where they are. I I would like to explore using our insurance provider to provide the human resources services that my understanding it, it can staff figure this out who who would be the one to figure out whether or not this would be part of the benefits that we get from our insurance provider it's like i i really am not i am not in favor of spending much more money with connor and gallagher um could i could i just suggest sure. is yes. you know with the whole idea of me having the file it might be a really good uh, you know, exercise here to get all the files together in the best way we can. And then from there, maybe we could have someone come in and look through what we have. Right now, it sounds like we're all over the place, but we could put them into our order of everyone's file goes in, every, everything for that person goes into their file, and then maybe have the insurance people come through and look and say, That's a great idea. But I think you need to you need to address who exactly would that person be or people be to pull it together and give it a time frame. You know, if it's at two weeks, you know, there's not that many employees. You, you know right. what I mean? And we what would happen if you took the files with you today to the clerk's office today? You just literally packed up the boxes today and took them with, and we volunteered to help organize them with you. Yeah. Well, they want to make copies. I, I think you need to make copies too, don't you think? It sounds like you need things to get through your day, to do your work for the day. I mean, you need today. Access. For today? Furthermore, do, does anybody even know what they're looking at? I mean, nobody knows for the most part what they're looking at. And we're taking something that somebody- Well, we know what applications look like. We know what resumes look like. We know what um, reviews look like. We No, we actually do understand that. Whose ever name is on it, it goes in their file. And then within the file, you have three files. You have employment, you have payroll, and you have benefits. So, so you pick up one person's file and has three files in it, everything separated. Then you could go through and say, hey, we don't have an I-9. Right. And, <laughs> so what, and, what, and so what happens after that? They don't have an I-9, then what? Then Do you send it off to the side? Step. You no. send it off to the side? Do you send it over to the it. department that has it? You flag it. doesn't have it? Well, I can, you know, we could all make a list of what we feel is missing because there's supposed to be a checklist. Yeah, and then the law comes on right and says, oh, that I was in there before. I saw it. I can't tell you the name of it. Like, that, lock. I, saw it. Exactly. I don't believe the locks are working. That's what it seems like to me. Like, that seems like that's the big problem. Well, let's not get to that point till we get our system together. You know, like, let's put files together. It, it really is not that hard. If he has someone's name on it, put it in their file. Then we go through the file and we separate the file to the three things I said, or four. And or honestly, you. that's what we tried to do. We tried to get guidance and leadership from Connor and, Connor and Gallagher. We got a list of items that are supposed to be in certain files and we stapled them to the folders. We 
try to put those items in those folders. And if we do decide to hand over the ones that are in the finance office, you will see that right on those folders. They are probably on the ones that you have that we hand the over. The checklist? Yeah, the checklist. Yeah, not everything. Right, because yeah. everybody doesn't have everything on the checklist. The checklist is comprehensive. Not everybody has their whose job is it to take care of the the checklist? Yeah, any new hire should have had that checklist completed. So who would be responsible for that? I don't know if there's if all the items on that checklist even apply to us here at the township. There's some things that we have and some things we don't have. Okay. The latest so, hire for the township, do you have a resume? Do you have an application? Yes, they all have that. Do you have a background. Do you have a background check? Everyone has that. Okay. So where what is the mystery? I'm so I'm not I'm, sure, I'm not sure what the mystery is. Trusty guys, Trusty Robinson was trying to get uh, a thought well, in here. Well, it sounds like a, a a strategy is for the current files to be merged with what's at the clerk's office. Take copies of what you need, and let's figure out what's missing. And then we'll have we'll put everything in one place, which is in the clerk's office, and then you'll make copies of what you need. Is that workable? There's also the problem of what to do with it, because basically there's a volume issue um, of where do you put it? OK, so after you've you've decided um, X, Y, Z, where does that where do you want to put it? There's a document retention policy that needs to be gone over and then deciding meaning like, OK, the getting all of what you don't want taken care of. Do you want to it to remain? Um, in my locked office, that was one option. So one option is um, having another space for it. Um, the pieces that the clerk has, great. I'm sure that, that, again, we're trying to figure out a way to get that to happen. And who's going to be doing that work, like going through the documents? Because the biggest issue is not what's missing. It's all the stuff you have. Sorry, I thought we were just talking about current employees and any employees that have left in the last year. Let's start there. Right? Yeah. Let's start there. Right. Only the personnel files, right? We have to call it something different. Personnel, employment, payroll. And, and then if there's another issue around other documents that are being managed and what the volume is and what the retention is, we can deal with that at a later point. I just this is employment, employment focus. Is right. that a workable solution? From your perspective, from my perspective, it is, but I, I think we want to put a time frame around it. And I think you want to kind of say who is who is the uh, township person yeah. or people who are responsible for that. And then we could work together to whatever you need. I'm looking at you, but that doesn't mean it's you. I think that no, I think that's a great point. Um, but knowing that we had that checklist in place a couple of months ago, anyone new who came in should have those check boxes selected by whoever the hiring manager was. And so there's two checklists that were to be clear, to be super clear. There's a checklist that was all the potential pieces from Connor and Gallagher. And then we have our own internal checklist. So that that's very, they're, they're two different checklists. Give me it all. Great. Just if it has that person's name on it, should be in the file. Okay. So back to uh, Trustee Geist's question. Is two weeks a reasonable time frame? Is that too long? Is that not long enough? I think two weeks is way too long. They've had months. I understand. Well, we we're looking at staff, though, because they're the ones yeah. that have to do the work. Right? I thought we said that we would give the files to, to Powlitz and then Clerk Powlitz, and then I personally would volunteer to help her organize them. And I'm sure okay. other other members would as well. All right. So be careful with that. That needs to you, you have to have staff do yeah. the organizing. Yeah. yeah. Um, right. But so now you're going to have staff organizing the files. I want, I want to remind you of this. The same files that everyone was in an uproar about the Kirk Powell holding in her possession. We're going to have multiple staff members going through these files. So we're yeah. saying that someone will be identified right now. I will work with them. I will help because I will have access to the files too, and we'll get it together. You know, and we that, nominate, we I nominate, well, I nominate Lisa Rose. Well, well I, I, I nominate <laughs> Michelle Jasmine. She's, she's probably right. a better one to do that right now. I, I would look at the staff, but I would, I would ask the staff, yeah. you know, what is your recommendation? 
Um, I've already been auditing the I-9 files and I have come up with a comprehensive way of keeping track of who has what, who has what signed off on. Okay. I feel like if that was to continue, that would help keep track and document what specifically we have from which employee and what we are missing. Okay. So I wouldn't mind doing that. Okay. Thank you. Being and Lisa, going you're through every file, yeah. okay. but not only just for I-9s. For yeah, for I'm just saying, like, if I, if I could continue that for like every Perfect. specific thing that would be well, I feel like that's not nice the track of the would follow it and Michelle and and the supervisor and Gerald you all work work together and we can get this done right and then and what's this. the reasonable time frame for the current so maybe it's in a phase so current active employees should be able to be completed within a week and then anyone who's been has uh, employment terminated for any reason for the last uh for the last two years can be another two weeks out but anybody who is immediately in there we should be able to do those pretty fast all right just i apologize i didn't mean to step on you um just to be clear we are talking about are we only talking about the supervisor's office or are we talking about the highway department and no. the assessor's office we're talking about the supervisor's but, office right now how that we're talking about is everybody it's the highway department we're talking Okay, oh. we're excluding the highway department. Well, it's some of those highway department employees that are, have documents missing. So if we see that, then what do we do with it? We'll you know, put that aside. That'll be phase three. Our focus right now is that office right there. So I believe we should be focusing on that. And the phase one should be current employees. Phase two should be employees that have left within the last two years. And phase three can be the other offices if we deem necessary. But right now we need to get that office under control and organized. And you, um, Attorney Waisaki, um, to be clear, is it in the requirement for the I-9 to have any of those copies? And what I'm saying is there is a definition of what makes a complete file um, question and that there is people that believe that a complete file doesn't require the copies. Is that correct? And um, so I'm, a little, I'm a little confused. So the I-9 forms, um, my understanding of the I-9 forms is we don't need a copy of the actual identification. Whoever views the identification needs to sign off that they viewed it and they don't think it's fraudulent. So the form just requires the person who's, you know, the someone from the employer to view the identification and note which type of identification was presented and then sign off that it looks legit. Um, typically I-9, that form, which is like a two page form, that those are stored separately because they need to be available um, if there's you know, any, if, you know, if immigration ever has a question about an employee. But um, I, I mean, I, I don't have a problem with copies being in the, I guess I'm not sure what you're asking. Um, you say that it's complete without the copy because that I've also been instructed as well that having the I-9 with the copies is not a good idea. So having the, just the, um, my point is, is that there's a difference of, of opinion about what is being complete. And you have three different subsections with totally different um, completeness. Most of them are complete. But again, I'm just trying to say if in the past part of the definition misunderstanding was that they were complete without the copies and you're saying, yes, they're complete without the copies, as long as the person has signed the form saying that they have seen documentation, correct? Yeah, so the, the I-9 form, I mean, I'm pulling up right now. So the I-9 form just requires the employer um, to uh, to attest under penalty of perj perjury that I've examined the documents presented by the above name employee. Um, the documents appear genuine and relate to the employee named and to the best of my knowledge, the employee is authorized to work in the United States. So that, that's all that's required is, is for someone to look at these documents and attest that they appear correct. Um, I, no, I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. I don't know who's speaking. Okay, that's pretty clear. I, I was just going to say, if it has an employee's name on it, and we have a document of it, 
it goes in the file. And if, you know, if, if you want to have one, another separate file, I get it. Of the I nines because you're working with them, you may need you may need all the resumes in a different file. I have no idea. But the 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 point of this is that I have a complete file of everyone. If it has their name on it, we have them do it. Put it in the file. We'll figure out if it's employee payroll or uh, or benefits. It's not that hard, right? So when you guys split up all the files, were those the highway files and the assessor files too? Because they were all in the same drawer. Yeah, they are. That's okay. what's so in the drawer. Right now. That needs to go back into those files. So not just no, well, the there, there, nobody's interested in the highway and the assessor. Well, we don't have anything because... over the highway right now. I mean, we could get those, but, but we, we still don't have jurisdiction. Payroll, and we still they still get benefits and all that stuff is important. So it, it's definitely we express that I, I, I don't know if, where you guys stand, but I, I think that that is like like third on the list of things to be prioritized. So I said we didn't say we didn't care. We just said that like, that's not our first that's not our first focus. Am I am I in agreement? Are, are, are my fellow trustees in, a, in agreement that that it, the, it's not that it's not we don't care. It's just that that's not our priority right now. We want to focus on this office at hand. Are we in agreement? Yes. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So now have you heard that clearly? That, that it is important, it's just not the priority right now. So I was just writing down, can, is one week reasonable to get nine employee profiles consolidated? Okay. Yeah, uh, as far as like what we have, taking copies that we that yeah. we have, and right. then uh, working your... with you so that we can merge those files of what you have, mm -hmm. have them as, mm -hmm. I think that's the best. One week's right. reasonable, is that, mm -hmm. okay. And then I think the second ask was any employees who've left in the last two years. I can't remember what number that count is. Probably less than 10, isn't it? Less than I 20? I don't know. Probably about, probably about 10 or so, I would imagine. And does the clerk have some of those files? I actually am not sure okay. where. I, I don't know what they have. Yeah. Yeah. I think I have all your people in there okay. too. Okay. Literally everyone that was in that file was given divided up and given to Clerk Polyax. If there was a file, it was... So there was some that we found that probably didn't go to your... Okay. Thing. Okay. They were high so weight. we'll put it yeah. on to that. Okay. We'll we, figure we, out. Said we, okay. we said it's going to be two weeks to do that, okay. to do that next group. Okay. And then the third phase, I think, is what Trustee Geis was talking about, was a uh, highway and assessor's office, right? Which is, a, I think, is a larger pool of employees, yeah. right? Yep. Yeah. Is another two weeks after that reasonable? Four weeks? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Does that address your concern, Trustee Guys? You want it actionable? Yeah, I, I want it to be fair for the people who are doing the work. So yeah. as long as they're in agreement with that timeline, that's per that's perfectly fine. Thank you. Yeah. Well, appreciate it because I, I, I was trying to get to your point about actionable and time box. So, yeah, I think we got there. Thank you. So we're all in agreement with this then? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So we'll have to. This is our recommendation. Any concerns, supervisor, operations manager? What about Conover, Connor and Gallagher? To do. I think we're trying to consolidate them first. Um, do we think an audit is necessary after we've gone through this exercise? Not necessarily. Not I think this we need point. to reassess at the end of the you know so consolidation it, organization. But I do think we need to revisit Conover. And Gallagher's um, their role, their their role, yeah, okay. their, how, how effective right. they are. Right. I, I, I would ask one thing of, of the team that's working on this: if you can give us a report or an assessment at the end, here's what's missing, or we really think we need an audit. Like, tell us if there is more work required, and then we can work with that. Right. That's good. Okay, thank you. And that's going to be in alignment with the um, operations manager who's working on a retention. A uh, retention document retention policy okay. that can help the bigger. Thank you. Picture. Thank you. Okay. All right. So then moving on, item number six discussion on the proposed process for hiring a driver. So our understanding is that we've lost a driver. Mike is no longer an employee. Is that is correct. Okay. Um, I thought we were supposed to hear about. See, that's a pro we are supposed to be told about that. That was one of the rules for. For this committee is that you, we are supposed to be notified of any any changes. You know, it, it was pretty 
So we, we told we told you the the day that um, that we start we realized that he was no longer with us. Um, the next day we were we were figuring out okay that or that day or the next day there was an email going out letting you know that this was going to be um, that we had lost the employee due to well and again it was directed to the personnel committee um, directed to helping them understand what the process and what the issues were and the timing frames of of what what had happened. <clears throat> I did get a notification and and I did and the uh, supervisor confirmed that she had sent it to all the trustees. Okay. So I, okay. I we, well, we did, one of the things that we did discuss is that there would be no employee changes without our our without our review. So was this a dismissal or um or a resignation? Well, Mike just decided not to come back to work. He, is that what he decided? Yeah, he didn't say anything to anybody. He just left on the Thursday, and on Tuesday it was his third day, no call, no show. Let's not uh, do. Let's not do that because I don't want to put us in a situation where someone would have um, cause for libel. So let's not discuss that further. I just there was just resignation or termination. That was just the only answer. So we can discuss uh, anything beyond that. Not uh, in 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 this in this meeting. Yeah, we need to we need to uh, go to executive session if we want to go into detail, or we need to at least talk about going to executive session if we want to go. I could take something correct. general. You you can uh, in general if it just um, if you reach out to them within the three days, there's uh, there's an issue with that. The three days start again, but if you wait, that's a general rule. And there's well, so we heard. to be clear, there was a um, a suggestion for an exit interview from Connor and Gallagher um, that would call them um, not from here and would objectively give you all some information if it was to be. But we moved. specifically said we were not going to use Connor or Gallagher for the exit interviews. That that's something we were working on as a personnel committee. So where did that come from? Nothing has to be clear. Nothing has been done. No, it's so, not has no, I didn't ask for been done. You just said that that was in the plan. We specifically said that we are watching the spend. We are watching the spend with Connor Gallagher. We specifically said that we wanted this to be an act by the personnel committee. So I'm just trying to understand where that idea just came from because I want to make sure I didn't miss something. I think we have enough experience between the committee to conduct these exit interviews on our own. I don't feel like we need to spend taxpayer funds conducting exit interviews. Do you have an opinion on that? I think one of us will always be available, just yes. a lot of numbers. Yes. So I think it's easy. Okay. I, yes. The only thing I was saying was that was one of the suggestions. Nothing has been, there's no job ad place. There is nothing, no actions being done currently. We gave you the information just like you asked that that there was an- a, No, that's a, not the question I asked you. I asked where the idea came in from Connor and for Connor and Gallagher to co conduct the exit interview. That's the question I was asked. And oh, to that point, before you answer that question, to that point, yes, do not replace this driver. We only have one truck still, one van still. So there's no reason, there's no good reason to hire a second person at this time. Could we all agree, trustees? Um, you, so there's pieces that you need to hear about that um, piece of information is that where we are or there is a timeline associated with having, for example, having a backup driver that would allow us to get the other um, van because that is, if, ready, you know? that is ready if we and Gerald has offered to become um, to get that backup certification with PACE and with BOT certification. Let's, let's, well, let's pause on that right now since we're watching the spend and let's go back to the other question was, which is where did Connor and Galler come into this, even possibly in the future conducting an exit interview with this employer or any other employee when we specifically said we did so, not. So to be clear, part of this issue is that, um, and part of the rules allow me to keep talking and not be, um, not be, uh, not and allow myself to get this thought out, but the piece is that you all need to know is we're about to um, release the newsletter. In the newsletter, it talks and and depicts our new services. We are right now at least halfway sold out of our current one driver's time. So as soon as we start to advertise, we will be sold out immediately. And then the reality is, is if you're trying to watch the spend, it's going to be months before you could even get a bus. 
It would be months before we would even again be able to then start the process that would take months that we would actually be making money um, if we had another driver. So the, the piece that we have to keep in mind is that the, we are actually um, in a time crunch to actually get a driver because if we don't start this process in two months, it, it takes about two months to get this driver um, hired. How many rides a day are we providing right now with the new bus and the new driver? Well, it, it depends. Today we had, I think we had seven today, maybe five today. Um, how many Once since he's no begun? Since the, well, since we haven't the really bus. had any marketing. The only marketing we have had is uh, me and Alexia going and Supervisor Hewitt going to some of the facilities, uh, letting people know about the information uh, about it. So um, everybody's excited about it, at least that's the buzz that we get. And, uh, but we've been kind of like holding back on it because we, like I said, Mike's my, my departure was sudden and abrupt. And so so should we make a motion to go into executive session so we can discuss this in more detail? Discuss what exactly, um, trustee guys? Well, the situation with the employee. To figure out potential? I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know what, what there would be to discuss. We have to hear it from him. It doesn't, and he's not here. And I've tried to call them multiple times. But I, so I thought maybe you'd have some more insight to offer in executive session. No, I don't. If people call in that the one bus is overloaded, can they use our existing system, the yes. base? So maybe we start with one bus? I, I'm not in favor of hiring another driver right now. And so we, five rides a day, seven rides a day is not enough. That's right today, now. but what if it, what happens tomorrow? Then, then, we, then we cross that bridge when we come to it. It, it we, I understand the want to provide the service, but I'm of the mind that we need to have the need before we Okay, so the further. process, if we need the need, if we have the need tomorrow, if we have the need Monday, uh, we won't be able to begin the process right well, away. It is takes it just takes some time we have to get physical exams we have to get drug tests yeah. we have to get recommend we have to get paperwork signed through um, our partners at page Um, there's a lot of things that take a lot of time and it's just we haven't had this service we haven't had this service so we're going from no service to service so if we have to incrementally grow with it i think that's okay Right. And there's a lot of things we haven't had at the township that we now currently have. And Which is great. Right. Which is great. But I don't think going from no service to, yeah. I, I think it's okay to grow it. And I think it's okay for, for our community to understand we're growing it and we're being mindful of cost. And we're not just going to put all the service in place before we even understand if we need to pay two full-time drivers with benefits. Okay. So one driver um, can do how many uh, routes or how many different stops? If they can do a thousand routes or two routes, I still say, if you build it, if, if we don't do this incrementally and justify the cost, I think it's going to be problematic. We've already had two drivers on payroll for several months, not driving, lifting heavy boxes in the pantry, which is, I'm going to guess, part of probably what went awry, but I'm not going to go there. The um, I, I we have each expressed the importance of watching the spend. If we're offering a new service, people are going to be so thrilled about it because they didn't have the service to begin with. So it's okay for them to grow with us. But but trustee guys, it's also to what you're saying. It's not like we're leaving people high and dry if they want to right. ride because Correct. we do existing service. Right. This Correct. is a different service. So this is an enhancement, exactly. Is overloaded and everyone's more excited about the new system, then maybe we, you know, get rid of the old system a little bit more yeah. and add the second yeah, As it begins to, to grow, then we think about hiring. Okay, problem. well, let, if we're thinking about things, let's think about the load on the single one driver that we have and the fact that if he decides that there's too much on him, he decides to do something. Now we have no. We problem. still have the other options. I, I feel like we're 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 not communicating with one another. Let's really make sure we're listening and hearing one another. 
We are not leaving our community high and dry. They don't have this specific service now. They have other options on the table right now that they have been using. This is an enhancement. So it were, if we go with the one driver and the load becomes burdensome, then we grow the program because the need has required it. We still don't even have the assessment to understand what the demand is going to look like when you do advertise it. And even if you do, like Clerk Powell would said, we're not going to be leaving anyone out high and dry because there is still a system in place that they have already been using. And the one driver is going to be at least relieving some of the burden from the existing program. That which has been improvement. Time and that's been overloaded, which is why we're we're in this position. So as soon as we get to 20 rides, which we're very close to getting to, I would assume and we'd be getting close to 20 rides by the end of this month, then that one driver is going to be overloaded. So 20 a day? Yes, 20 a day. So the, the issue is- Because we need to understand why we can't retain employees before we keep bringing more employees in and absorbing that expense. So it's 20 rides a day, and you said they're doing seven rides right now before any marketing, right? Okay. So even if it doubled, that's 14. Mm -hmm. So. And so then we would be full and we'd be, we wouldn't have a backup driver. We I don't know. For us moms who, who've been driving minivan or carpools for all these years, I bet we could could we could handle 14 rides in a day. I'm just sorry. I'm just saying, <laughs> like, Debbie, I mean, come on. <laughs> <laughs> So you'd also you'd put another, I, I know that because I spent time with the operations manager, the other concern is if we don't have a second driver, we don't get the second bus assigned. Uh, but you've indicated that if the operations manager, Gerald, becomes certified, Pace will deliver the bus and will at least have that capability to deliver when, if and when we need to hire a second driver. We right. waited so long for these buses, Trustee Robinson, that now this is now where we want to light a fire. We've waited this long for the buses. We've gone without two buses this long, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah my point really. Well, I heard you. I heard you that he can get certified so we can take possession of the second bus. I get that. I understand that. But my point is, I don't understand the urgency because we've gone this long without two buses. Because it's going to be that much longer if we allow the opportunity to slip away at this time. So it'll be right, it's going four to, to six months. months. We would have to reapply and they will refund us our, our down payment money, the $500, they will refund it. They'll take the bus back. We would have to reapply and then go through the whole process again for the one bus. How long do they take around? Well, it has taken How a very months? long time. Six the months. First time. Now, I don't know if it'll take the same amount of time because now we have uh, we have experience and we have learned what they are looking for. There, there are different divisions that we deal with PACE that I've dealt with PACE. In another life, I dealt with the paratransit division. In this life, this is the Vanpool division. They do things differently, even though the documents are pretty much the same. So, so I don't know if it's gonna take six months. But then again, it could take six months. But I do know that we have some some learning, real experience with them. So we know the documents that fill out. We know the tests now that they <laughs> require. You know, we know the time frames and the DOT cards that they got to have. What is the cost for the bus to sit there before we need it to sit there? Thousand well, dollars a month. I'm sorry. Thousand dollars a month to rent the bus is my understanding. No. No. No, it's a hundred dollars a month. Thank you. Okay, hundred dollars a month. There's I, I, no other expense for that bus to sit there than a hundred dollars a month. That's all insurance. You have to put insurance. Well, yeah, the insurance part of it, whatever you know, with that insurance. So that was here. that was what I was factoring in the thought process as well. Um, I wanted to give the operations manager slash transportation manager a chance to explain why it would be important to bring the second bus at this time. I'll, I'll, you know, I, I've heard what he said. I wanted the rest of the turn to the uh, trustees to hear it as well so they can make an assessment. And when does the newsletter hit mailboxes? Is it's printed? The reason why I, I've um, asked for it to be delayed is because I, I think it's important for the board to meet one more time and decide the budget um, at the next meeting. After that next meeting, if, it, if there's no resolutions, then we'll let it go. 
but if we only have one chance in six months um, and there could be a change in hours, there could be a change in um, food pantry options, then I thought that in for a few other um, important needs that were being developed after the June 14th meeting, I think it needs to be decided and gone. Um, but there's some significant changes that would be impacting that. I know um, Lisa has had that done and ready to go, but our- so when did we, How long have we known that we can have a backup plan um, so that from the, from the, how long have we known that there was the option to have the backup plan of having uh, operations manager uh, Wolf um, as a backup? How long have we known that? Well, I'm just gonna tell you right now, I'm just a Band-Aid because I, I, you know, I've done my time behind the wheels of buses and trucks. No, no, I'm just asking how long have we known that that was an option? It hasn't been an option until now. We're only doing this and because it's an emergency that's good for the township. Yeah, that's the only reason. So I'm just understanding. So I just want to understand. So there's no flexibility in your role as the operations manager, but there's flexibility in everybody else in the office to modify their roles and responsibilities? I, I think it became an option when the sec when the driver left. It wasn't really on the table before that. So. And the other piece is that isn't the operation manager in charge of um, the safety sensitive DOT, um, all of that. And so part of the understanding was that he has the background that can um, in the driving past. How long can we wait until we have to tell them that we want the, the bus or we don't? I'm not sure. Okay. That's the, that's the fair answer. Yeah, no, that's fair. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. But to, to Is there find. a way to find out? Is there a way for you to get us a timeline of how long that would be and, and shoot that to us in an email so we'll know? Well, surely I can do that. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. Certainly. <laughs> Any more discussion on that topic? Our, so well, could it be added to the next um, agenda so that um, on the 14th um, we can have an update on the timing of what PACE says are the issues and if you all um, want to do that? And okay. ridership? Just to... Yeah. All right, then. moving on, number seven, discussion of updated job descriptions for the operations manager, bookkeeper, director of general assistance, director of senior services, caseworker, and executive assistant. Can you guys tell me what this is all about? Why, why the changes again? What, I, I printed out what you sent to me at 11.30 and I'm not understanding a lot of this, quite honestly. Okay, You're so making the bottom, changes. The that... bottom line is there is a domino effect that has happened with the, uh, when we made uh, Lisa Rose the bookkeeper, there are some She's things. She's not a bookkeeper, right? I, I don't know where that word came. I was quite shocked to see it on this job description. Oh, I thought that was your show. No, we have been. Am I mistaken? We have been well, told she's getting trained in QuickBooks, but I don't know if she's the bookkeeper. Exactly. She, so what is she? In the last meeting, just to be clear how that term came about, in the last meeting, your the request was for her to be added as the bookkeeper. And I, we can go through the agenda topic, but that was the wording was that you wanted her to be trained as the bookkeeper. But uh, the, sorry, there, um, I didn't mean to interrupt. It's fine. Um, I, I've been using the term, what do I call it? Finance? Uh, there finance. are so many different terms. It's so hard to stick with one thing. Or just, sorry, I don't know what I got. No, go ahead. Well, why, why, why did we ask for that to happen? A big part of that was because we're paying $13,000 a month for an accounting service, which is excessive. And we have someone who has capability, interest, and potential based on what our accountant has told us, county service, to be able to fulfill that role to minimize the spend. So yes. how were we going to fill that job anyways if we didn't put her if we didn't put some employee in that role? So I'm not sure why that required everybody else's jobs to change. That's really what I'm well because it, it went from it went from my own personal job description because that part of the 
that part of that function had been given to me as operations manager. Okay. Um, once it left from my job description, then it's a domino effect because there's some things that Lisa was doing has to be taken away from her in terms of community and outreach. And so it's a domino effect. Everybody had things, you just had to change them because it got changed. I think it we're was a very small office and you know everything is linked together. Everybody is linked together. And we, we try to make it as a team that you have somebody over here and you got somebody who can back them up. You have somebody over here, you have somebody that can back them up for vacations, sick time, downtime, or whatever. And when when responsibilities change then it's a domino effect. And so we call ourselves getting ahead of the game by redoing the, the job descriptions so that we can present them to you to make it easier to understand what we're trying to do as a whole. That's the reason why you got the, that thing at 11.30. And I apologize for it being so late, but we had food pantry distribution today and I had to assist out there and so on and so It's a big story. But we've been doing a lot and uh, we put a lot of effort into this. We've got input from the employees. We've asked people what they want to do. We've got information that you are going to assign people jobs. Uh, we've got all kinds of different things, but we put together what we thought was best going forward for the township. And that's what you have in that document that I sent in the email. And like I said, uh, it starts at the top with me. And it just trickled down to all the different changes. And we tried to illuminate them in those job descriptions. Are people happy with the changes? Well, they've had input on it. it, it you know, you never, I don't know if anybody's going to be absolutely happy unless you just tell them you can come to work and get paid and not have to do anything. But, you know, that's, that's not going to happen. happen. Well, but nothing has been, to be super clear, nothing, no changes have been. There, this is the start of the process. We just presented there, this to you. Meaning that there's how long a month that would need to be taking place with the personnel committee creating and, and sorry I didn't mean to interrupt. No, go ahead. So there was there was a process that you that needed to happen with reviews that at the review which I'm sure the personnel committee is going to be a part of um, I'm sure the finance committee is going to be a part of the review because there there's a financial um, implication and so at that time you all are going to need these done. And so that's going to be weeks from now, weeks from now. So that's a few weeks though, because most everybody is new. So most of the reviews are due pretty much around, around about the same time, you know, plus or minus a couple of weeks. So. But how are you going to establish a performance review? It's the, I don't know, yeah. the functions and shifts, it shifted so much. Right, real basic, real basic performance need to push reviews. off the performance review because it's going to be based on the current job. Right. It will be based, right. It will be based on what is currently there. But what we have presented to you is what we want to have going forward. So and, we have gotten, exactly. and we have gotten and yeah. we have gotten we have gotten input the, from the employees. We've sat down with first draft. just about everybody. There are a couple more that we still need to sit down with, but for the most part, we've sat down with everybody. We, we've asked them specifically, what do you want to do? Some people can answer it. Some people refuse to answer it. So, but, you know, either way, what do you want to do? And we wanted to incorporate it into that, into that uh, job description. So, like, as a, for instance, executive assistant. I didn't do much of anything with executive well, assistant because uh, now we're requiring was, I was understanding, it was my understanding that you were going to be doing that. I, I bet I'm going to do what exactly? So this, committee, this committee was going to do <laughs> <I'm paid. laughs> well, anything. No. So the, the, in, part of the discussion was the executive committee was going to make that determination. I mean, not the executive committee, I'm sorry. The, the employment, yeah, the employment personnel committee was going to draw that up. Okay. So there's, a, so I guess part of this is that we're trying to understand the process that you all want to undergo, um, because as um, the operations manager was explaining, in order to have your reviews, which is going to allow you all time to um, talk with each of the employees and whatnot, um, there needs to be a 
both a understanding of what was done in the past, what their job is being re referred to and what is going in the future. That, that happens at the same time. So in, in order for you all to be ready to do that, and I know you're in, I understand that you're not paid to do that. That's why we're trying to help you give you the drafts from which you're going to move from. And those, for example, I know that the uh, executive assistant, she wants time to think about this. And so there's going to be time for everyone to think about this. And so it's the first start of the conversation, which I'm sure is going to involve um, parts of the three and five year plans that we're doing, the decennial committees. Um, there's a, a lot there that is going to happen in the next month. Well, there's nothing on here. I right now my focus is the executive assistant. Um, it, it has have you so always we, required them to be a CPA? So again, this is for of course not. Okay. And, and so now, again, now you are no. Okay. This is not a requirement. It was um, again. It's and this isn't mine. And again, I want to say if we want to get into any details of these, we need to be cognizant of when we need to move to executive committee. I'm just talking about a job description right now. I'm not talking about a personal job, right? I, I'm just. And so in the past, we didn't, in the past, we didn't have um, them as a potential backup for a bookkeeper. Okay. If they decide to be a bookkeeper, if they decide to be a backup bookkeeper, then there's, um, then essentially there's the um, preferred re re um, experiment experience, which is again, what you're looking through, I'm guessing. Um, but the, the point is, is that there needs to be a decision as to what that person or what that role wants to do. Um, and there needs to be an understanding, okay, if that role, if the person or a role wants to do something, is there a corollary, um, corollary requirement for training? And so if there is, great, then there needs to be time for that too. Um, when in the past, not given enough time for training was a, a employee um, complaint. So we wanna make sure that they have time to do the training that they wish to do and that they're um, that they need to be doing in order to do the job. So the, my question is: This is all being done because you asked for Lisa Rose to do the finance function. We asked her to be put back in her original. Okay, position. so to me, this might be a little in the weeds, but so you need someone to take over the community outreach, and and you I don't know who's doing that. So that's one thing. That was part of your function. Sure. So then your finance function, you have some more open time to do something else. I'm not sure why everybody else needs to be moved around and changed. This might be something you want to look at for the future, but for the simple reason of Lisa Rose going into the finance function, it seems to me some of your time has opened up so maybe there's something that gets filled there. Do you follow what I mean? Yeah, I it shouldn't be everybody has to change. I hear, I hear what you're saying, and it's, not, and it's not, uh, I agree with you in one sense that it seems like, oh, well, just change her and nobody else. But uh, in the interest of just trying to be fair and trying to see what going forward, because that's what we're thinking, we're thinking, bigger than today we're thinking you know months and years out we're thinking a bigger picture what do we want to look like where are we headed and where are we going and what do we need in terms of service these services in terms to provide transportation and all these wonderful things my time uh you're saying my time is being freed up however with the transportation services kicking in when we when before we didn't have it, right. there's no free time. So there you go. Right. So, <laughs> so I just that, wanted to make that point clear. And I understand. Why I, why I don't think because that we right. gotta we gotta make sure we have so that. maybe it's a good thing so, that now you have that time for the transportation on it. How right. long did this take to to do? Uh, hours and hours well, and hours. And was this weeks. done? Was this done with guidance by Connor and Gallagher? Do we have to pay for this? Okay, so to be clear, in the budget that's being proposed, Connor and Gallagher is still in the professional services that are being proposed. Um, if you all want to, um, what what did happen was each um, of the reviews went through Connor and Gallagher because they are the professional HR people that gave 
input the job descriptions I should review them. right the job descriptions and when are, when are your reviews up for most people aren't most people up well some of them are even are due right now right so, so they we just we're just trying to see you know how to lay it out going forward so we can do it properly and not have kickback or somebody unhappy about somebody saying something else and you know so on and so forth so it's a, I hear what you're saying. It, let's let's. It's almost all new people here, right? Right. It's it's a new team. Um, literally. Literally. Um, Trust each other. Right. There's this concept of you maybe you've heard it before. You forming, storming, norming, and performing. Right. Where you bring a team, you form it. There's going to be some tension. There's going to be some angst, but you want to calm it down. Changing everyone's job descriptions feels like. We're continually Constant. storming. Constant. It, it's yeah. not settling down. I, I have to agree with you, but the difference in, in this case is we've gotten input from everybody whose information has changed. We have asked them specifically, what is it you would like to do? Or this is what we're proposing. Do you like it? Is there anything you want to change? Is there something you want to take out? Is there something you want to add in? And that's that's the difference. The difference is, it's been a collaboration. It's not a unilateral decision that you're going to do X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z. It's not coming from Connor, Connor and Gallagher. It's not coming from Supervisor Hewitt. This, what you see on that paper uh, has come from everybody who, who's been affected. So the... Aside from... Aside from well, so executive, executive assistant and the bookkeeper, right. which we, we've we never employed a bookkeeper before in this township ever. And book for our accountant, bookkeepers don't even exist anymore. She's been very clear about that. But so are you telling me that both both of these positions agreed that they needed to hold master's degrees in, in accounting and a CPA? Are those, are those uh, requirements? That, that's what you have down here. Preferred. 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 Okay, preferred. that's preferred. Yeah, and I, I don't know how I'm going to hire that. Or I they need. Have bad needs, but I got them. Does that so, affect a yeah. performance review? No. Preferred. Like we suggest that you right. well, get your master's. Well, preferred is not, I don't think, it would be fair to hold that against them and preferred. You know. They have to be realistic. Right. Right. There's Extensive. no way we're getting a master's in accounting. No, right. It, it's not for the money, right? Mm -hmm. Y'all, you really do have to be realistic. Ten years for just the executive assistant. No. Ten years executive assistant or office manager, extensive experience with bookkeeping. Uh, bachelor's or master's in accounting, experience or training with websites, experience or training with grant writing, experience of what grant writers make $100 an hour. I, I, you're not going to get somebody filled in this position for the money that you're offering. Yeah, but we can train them. And that's we don't the really you want to train people yeah, on that that because we do not want on the job training. But well, that's not true because otherwise we wouldn't have put these roads back. Right? Well, that, that is, she was hired in the position. We should not be hiring people with the intent that they're going to get on the job training. We should be hiring people that are qualified for the job. Now, if there's a change in it or we want them to grow further, then yes, they should have on the job training. But we should not be hiring a social worker to do bookkeeping yeah there's no way and say oh we'll give you on the job training so it's not the same thing i agree with you on that well of course you do a uh, continuous training for people but you cannot train you don't hire anyone off the street and say hey we're going to train you for this. Don't worry about it. Now, when we could go out there and hire someone with the skills, particularly to what they need, what their job is, it's, it's a little bit aggravating, actually. It's really strict rather than a your skill set. You know? I'm concerned about our hiring process and our onboarding process and our retention process. We've lost two people in the first month. We've hired, we invested time with Connor and Gallagher and over your time to hire. I, 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 we have to focus on, on being really clear with people about expectations, what we're looking for, and how we're gonna make them feel part of the team and be successful. Um, I, that's my challenge to you, operations manager and supervisor. We have to address that. Um, sorry, I got a little off topic. Um, you were talking about what the, so what's the next step with these job descriptions? Well, I presented them to you. Okay. Um, 
What did you think they were well, going to do with well, them? Oh, sorry, cut you off. Well, I use I, I would hope that you would use them as a guideline for whatever you, whatever the committee decides they're going to do with regards to um, the, the performance reviews, the performance, and then going forward, what should those job descriptions look like? Based on what we think, where we're headed in this township, where what we want to see accomplished here, the services that we provide, uh, those job descriptions are in line with what the people said they would like to do outside of one and what they said they would like to do. Okay, thank you. I've noticed and they fall in line with also the plan that what we would like to do as well as a township. So in previous positions I've been in, they, they, um, they actually separated out the review process from the goal setting for the next year. So let's review what we did last year. Let's talk about your performance in the job that you were in, right. which may be problematic for people that have had four or five job descriptions for the last number of months. But then you say, okay, and here's what you have to do next year. Here are your goals. Here's how we're going to make you successful. Here's the position description. So I, I, would, I would recommend that you separate out the performance reviews from, um, from setting new position descriptions and setting goals for next year. I would not incorporate new job descriptions for people as part of the previous year review. Is that fair? Oh, yeah, that's fair. Okay. And I, I guess the understanding, the misunderstanding is that wasn't going to be part of their, what they're going to be reviewed on. That's after the review is done and closed. Now let's move forward. And this is where we'd like to see. So this is what we talked about before is we got to this point that you said you would like to do, you said you were okay with. This is and is what we need as a township. Here we are. Let's let's get going on it for the next week. Okay. So you're presenting them to us. We're not going to tell you. I don't think we're going to tell you how to manage and how to direct people. But I think we do want to see. Here are the services the township is planning to deliver in the next year. Here's how we think these resources are going to align and deliver those services. That to me is an important piece. That and that's think, what we've done here. Uh, so I think the piece we're missing is what are the key services that we want to deliver over the next year? Okay, the, the key services will be uh, in all the departments that we have addressed here. We're talking about senior services, we're talking about general assistance, general emergency assistance. We're talking about transportation. We're talking about, we haven't gone over the reception in this area, but that's gonna be another one. Uh, we're talking about uh, the whole operations of the township in these documents. Food pantry. Food pantry as well, yes. Okay. I didn't enumerate all of them, but yes. Okay, and as of this year, the new services of senior services and uh, transportation. The others are existing services, right? Reception, general assistance, and food pantry. Yeah, I would say, well, yes, they, they are new, but mostly everything we do is new. I mean, no, the thing. No, 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 it's that's not how it's supposed to be. I'm sorry. That's just my well, knee jerk reflex, not, but I realize it's not how it's supposed to be. And uh, I wish it wasn't that way. But it is. I mean, every we have we have to write policies and procedures. No, and we don't. Know. We don't. We don't. This is the oldest government. Exactly. It's been around for a long time. It's very helpful. And okay, I, where where are they? This is where you all get off in the weeds, and that I know. But where are they? The problems, and so your email to me this morning says the the. Where we have the senior services had a lot of difficult time consuming work setting up her department from scratch. What we just from scratch, we have the senior services why provider. Why is why is from scratch? I don't understand that. We don't have a budget. We, we don't have it. We I'm just asking. We always get senior services. There was a senior service provider here that retired a year before our administration came in, I think, maybe, and we never replaced it. And quite honestly, it was also the operations manager or whatever you wanted to call right, Bill, right. Bill Green. He had a portion of that as well. And quite, you know, as you're saying, you're just such a small group. Everyone had a little portion of it. To, so to so when we came in, when we came in, where was that stuff? Exactly. It, it was, where was it? It was there yes. before you were. Yeah, but, but where is it? 
They take it with them? Did they burn it when, when they no, left? No, it was secret. It was secret. We didn't hire anyone. And you could talk to former supervisors. There, there's a lot of research you could do. So it, the, the point being is a lot of pieces weren't put in the server. There wasn't an accumulated institutional knowledge that we were handed off. Right. Right. Um, like, like, you wanted to yeah. the way you wanted to yeah. think. That's, that's, that, that's a different no, the, thing. The, no, I noticed in this, I'm sorry, I have to, no, no. we are not advertising for a counselor. No. There is no counselor. It, there is no job description for counselor. There is no job advertising for counselor. I asked you to provide me all of the job um, uh, descriptions and postings. I think September was the last time I saw okay. September uh, 22. And prior to, my understanding is that you set the bar for the counselor so high, there's no way we're going to get anybody in here. Okay, so, so is, did you decide we are not going to offer counseling anymore? No, that's not true. There's a national shortage of counselors. Um, please Google that after COVID. There was a whole national shortage of counselors. Um, Connor and Gallagher has had a total of 12 applications for this position. For the way um, you have it set. And here's the thing. I didn't determine that that setting at all. I did not personally determine that. Is How it that was higher? Is it, it is at a higher education level than what our previous counselor had? Who was affected? It, and busy. Okay, yes. so the... The what I was told again. It's by, a yes or a no. Is it different or is it not? Is I, it, I was told that we needed to have a counselor that was licensed to counsel. Okay. So that licensure to counsel. Who told um, you that? Well, our our uh, Connor and Gallagher um, not did you. research into what Illinois law requires. Is there an email that speaks to that that you can forward to us where they advised you of this? Oh, where? Perfect. It's a service that our community really used, really wants, and given everything that's happening, and uh, you know, that's something that could be even more of service today. Michelle, has her hand that's my own background in mental health. You can be a counselor with an LSW, LCSW, you can be an LCPC, but I think the only qualification for this job is an LCPC, which does limit the other co providers that could essentially apply for a job as an LSW or an LCSW. Okay, thank you. So what would... I think talking to the mental health board, to, to be super clear, there isn't a township currently that, that directly employs a counselor that I have heard of in this county, um, to be super clear. Um, and um, the other piece is, is that I think talking to the mental health board uh, president as to what he believes um, is needed in a counselor might be another um, avenue that you can go down. Why uh, would but, it be part of the decision for the township office? What was that? Why would he be part of the decision making for the actual township office? Separate, seven nights, so separate. They are. I'm saying if you want advice from uh, as to what is needed to be a counselor and what the exact qualifications. And this was the advice that I was given. I am not a counselor. Um, I was given this professional advice. So again, if you want to, you know, as, as I just said, um, seek other advice. And there is not a single counselor that I know of that is in pay um, by a township right now. All right, so we have an action item to look at these position descriptions. You have more experience with the employees than I had. Trustee Robinson, I have to apologize. I have to exit the call. I, I've, I've allotted the amount of time I had for the middle of the workday for today. Thank you, every, for everyone. Thank you. Appreciate Jackson. it. Thank you. Sorry. Um, you've had more experience meeting with the employees than I had. Do you, can you commit time to review these position descriptions with yes. each employee? Yes, I can. And I will. So you'll get a get feedback. Yes. Okay. From each employee. Yes. And I know you've engaged some of the other trustees to sit in. Yeah, as, I'm as, on as available. Right. <laughs> okay. So that's that was your that was you positioned it for us to review to uh, identify in our own minds how it aligns with the services of the township and have follow up questions potentially, but also to review uh, with the employees as well. Is, is that? That's what I well, I think the employee review will be redundant. However, you're welcome to do so. I, I would not be opposed to that. Okay, thank you. 
right. Any more discussion on seven? Sorry, just a, to time box it. Um, your objective was to have these positions effectively position descriptions in place by a certain date. Well, you know, we my guidelines are going to be more at the six months mark for employees for for their six month reviews. Um, if something maybe the end of end of June, end of July, middle of July, I think that's six weeks. That's doable. Okay. And and again, we talked about potentially separating reviews from change in job descriptions, right? Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thank you. All right, then item number eight, discussion on how to respond to residents' requests for help. And this came, uh, the question came because of the weed uh, question at our last meeting. What has the office decided? How are you going to handle requests for help when it comes to mowing lawns? Like, So what we do is, we get a call that somebody is reporting uh, overgrown grass or overgrown weeds or whatever. We do send someone out with the yardstick. We stick the yardstick on the ground and we measure it. Measure it. We take a picture of that. That picture is then sent in uh, on, onto our computer. Um, the next step would be to send a letter to the property that says, there has been a complaint. Here's proof that the grass is overgrown. You have, I think it's two weeks to get the grass to take care of this. Mm -hmm. In the event that you don't, you there, there we will have to send a, a contractor over to cut the grass right. for you, at which point then you will receive a bill. Right. So which employee is doing this now? Right now it it is our bus driver, okay, because he's out on the road anyway, and he's driving clients around to different stops, and we actually put it on the route as a stop, so he so he definitely goes there, and then um, then after that the rest of the process follows. The piece that the board needs to help decide, and I'm planning to put this on the um, agenda on the 27th and to have a meeting um, on the 22nd with the um, natural within uh, conservation foundation foundation is the policy of do we want to do liens or do we want to do continuous letters. Um, if there's no liens then it's not there's not a financial component to it and it's not a whole lot of investment in hoping that eventually there'll be a um, either the per, it, the reality is is that it hits we generally get paid back when the person dies or the person wants to sell it um, and so the point being this is at the twenty on the meeting of the twenty seven right now we're making sure that we're getting taking care of those of making sure that the uh, document trail is being created so that if there is a decision if you all want to do liens. Um, and if you all want to put this on the 14th, because you've already decided it, um, we can, or you already feel like you have enough input, um, we can put that on the on the agenda for the 14th. So right now, the policy of how that's being enforced, um, it, it needs to be discussed as to how, whether we wish to put liens on houses, whether we want to continue with the letters. Um, if we're not putting liens, then it's, again, not a financial it costs the township money when you place a lien on a property? It's the main piece that costs the township money is the um, contracting the, the actual mow the mowers and then the legal piece of doing the lien. Um, so there's that. It's, so it's mostly the loan. Like about how many a week do you get? A week? I don't know. I mean, we got three all at once. It's this busy. Week. In one day, you got three yeah. calls. Yeah. Was it the same yeah. property yeah. or three separate calls. properties? No, three different calls. And it just depends on how perturbed that person who's calling in really is about uh, certain grass. We, in one instance, we got a call for the grass. By the time the driver got there, that very same day, the grass was cut. Mm -hmm. So um, it's you know up and down. And it's seasonal. Uh, the May and through uh, July is the most no, the heaviest okay. season. Yeah, um, that. <laughs> meaning you know, that's the time when people also realize that either they never did it or didn't. 
Okay. Um, and then by July, usually this this calms down. So you mean that either it's dead or um I'd imagine with the drought conditions right now you're not getting a whole lot of thank you um I, I don't I'm me where I'm standing right now you said three and mm -hmm. that's what we got this week that's it I thought there's some historical ones too they were gonna take care of um you brought them out last week was my point yeah I don't I I don't know how many are outstanding the historical one that I that I had contact any one after that last meeting we I got I got their number and we I put them on the list, the original list, of, to be uh, make sure that they're um, the the pictures were taken. So that's how it's being handled. Is there's a channel, and there's a ongoing maintenance of that. I was on a neighborhood board, and we did two letters and yeah. two one. Is it two weeks or is it a month? There's like they have quite a leeway of getting it. Yeah, I thought it was two weeks, and then you have to get a cut is because that, what you have to be. Hawkins and of is the person that who's making the complaint. They're the ones that's stomping and making a bunch of noise. It's not the person who brashes over. Right. Yeah. Right. I think it was two warnings or, or two. It was two week, two letters, and then the the second letter would be when you're going to be when they're going to try to uh, we're when we're saying by this time you need to have it mowed. We're going to do the mow. But we're continuing the process how it was before. I'm not mentioning any liens. I'm not mentioning any that language. Probably we're going to figure out if we're going to do that or not. I'm not. I don't want to. But how much does it cost the township? It's general. It just depends on how you how much the contractor charges you if you have to go cut the grass. Okay, so like a fifty dollar mow, but I'm, I'm no, more concerned. Oh, no. It's more it's, than fifty dollars. No, I mow like, my own grass. I have no it's idea. More like three hundred, three fifty. Because they're by the time they're being mowed, they're high. And so it's not a normal mow. It's a, they come out with weed whackers okay. or they come out with extra equipment. And so it's not, it's generally not. And, and the reality is, is it um, at the next meeting, I was hoping to have all the information from the um, recorder's website um, combined with all the records that we could find as to where we were at with how expensive this is. Is it expensive? It really is expensive. Um, and, and at the same time, um, there's just needs to be a discussion and policy created as to what we want to do, whether the letters work. I mean, each there's three other, there's two other jurisdictions that have um, the same jurisdictional options potentially as we do, meaning the county has the same jurisdictional option in the unincorporated areas and homeowners associations. A lot of homeowners associations aren't that um, vigilant. Uh, but again, we have to decide the cost. So I was trying to get those at the next meeting. Maybe the, the, for the future, maybe a volunteer program or mm -hmm. somebody to come and, and volunteer to go market, you know, oh, service yes. hour or something. But, you know, I don't know. It's That's not a discussion for today. Okay. Uh, any more questions and put on that line uh, agenda item? Okay, um, so that is number eight. Number nine, discussion of finance committee oversight of township accounting functions. Yeah, that was just, uh, uh, again, we're in this transition period. We And I appreciate you approving uh, and uh, getting the training material. We're, we're trying to get Lisa, you know, proficient um, with the with the support of the uh, current township accountant um, and figure out if the backup requirement, what that looks like. Um, I know potentially there's some other outside services that, that the uh, supervisors looked at. I, I really just want to make sure that we're, we're focused on um, what's important to do, um, how uh, how we're, we're helping Lisa be effective, how we're helping uh, setting time frames that are in her development, because I know that's something, and that we were helping her work towards certification. So um, I thought that some of that might be part of a finance committee uh, responsibility, because we want to make sure that Effectively, it's, it's controlling the costs of that, making sure it's effectively done, but controlling the costs as well. We, we, we really have to come bring down that investment in the monthly spend we've had with the outside account. So um, I just wanted to flag it as something that uh, I want to bring up the next time um, we have the finance committee meeting and then just get thoughts from other people as well. Yeah. No. <laughs> Well, I saw something that said it's going to take six to eight months for Lisa to be trained. And so that means six to eight months more. Of, uh, six to eight months 
Exactly. How do you mean that? that, that I didn't it, mean it. That's what I read on the. Uh, that was something that Linda, Linda, yeah. Linda shared. Right. That didn't come with. Right, but that doesn't mean six to eight months of of in an accountant thirteen thousand dollars a month. Well, she's the one that put it on. I think that came from the account, right? Yeah, and yeah. what a, the way I read that is for her to be able to. I thought it was to pass a bookkeeper or a, a certification exam or certification process, which maybe is reasonable because you might have to have certain so much time enrolled. I, I, I what I do want to ask is for, and then I want to make sure we're relying on this. Is okay, accountant Nader. What is the plan? What are checkpoints? How much time are you going to spend? And how much is it going to cost us to, to get this plan in place? So uh, do you think that you're going to get a contract by, by getting that? Uh, isn't it a contract the way that you're going to get to the costs? Well, we can. We, we can ask. We can ask her. I think we have to have specific guidelines and guardrails. Um, she put a, I remember she put a contract or proposal in front of us back in April. April. Um, I'll, I'll be honest. April. When I asked. When she worked when I worked through the budget process with her, I asked her if that was still valid. And she said, no, that's not how I want to work with the township. Um, I think there's an exit strategy. I think she has other clients that she wants to be able to spend time with. I mean, as much as we're talking about the money, that's a big time investment from her working with us as well. So I want her to be successful. I want us to be successful. I would like to have that discussion with her and work out a plan and whoever else uh, from the township to say, let's figure out what this looks like three months, six months, nine months, and how we bring the cost down, as well as bring our internal capability to a point where we can deliver against it. So that's what that was really around. Um, if, if no one has any concerns, then I would propose that, you know, I reach out to her and on behalf of the finance committee, and that we have, and include the operations manager in these discussions as well. Okay. I would like that. Okay, I'll make that. We'll recommend that. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And then number ten, old business. Anything? The only thing I can mention, I'm not sure how widely this was distributed, but after the last board meeting, there was a question around the you know, compensation uh, and the reimbursement for the assessor, um, and he he agreed to what the money he he had not been for, paid for for his car loans. He had requested that there be an additional payment on top of that for interest. I reached out to the township um, organization. TOI. TOI. They said, you can't do that. Um, it's not allowed. That is increasing his compensation. So um, I'm sorry he's not here. I'll reach out to him directly. So but it was a flat. It was a flat no. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you may want to talk to him. I'll talk to him. Yeah. I know he's, I know it's, he's, it was a flat no when I talked to the people at the team, well, unless he has different guidance. I, and I can't speak for him or know what it is, but I think the whole idea of everything we spoke about before, especially with the IMRF, is the or um, or any tax liability for our um, employees was to make everyone whole. I know what the statute says, uh, but this is not an, uh, this is not uh, um, payroll. This is not this is making him whole. So, um, so uh, you know, I'll I'm sure you. you could talk to him, but the, with the thought of, you know, it, it's it's our fault. You know, we need to take care of it. You know, and it's loss of wages. It's not paying him extra. It's loss of wages, especially since the fact of it's been like a year and everyone here denied what it, what the problem was. I'll talk to them. I'll tell them what they told me. Yeah. And and, and you go from there. Yeah. Cool. Do you think we would, because on the 14th agenda, there was a agenda item saying that that would be, that we, we would come to a resolution on this. Is that something that you think that we can still do? I, my objective is to do that, yes. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay. Uh, new business? Anything? Nothing? I got nothing. Uh, the one question that I want to make sure um, is, asked is on the 14th there's in the uh, meeting um you all have seen the draft agenda is there anything that you want i can bring it up if you want but i just want to make sure i'm pretty sure you did um got it um it was in with a email um i can send it again but it's on the personnel committee email 
I'll, I'll double check the, um, that you have that like the second, but let me just go over this and make sure that anything that wants to be added or changed. Okay. Uh, ju just because, you know, since with the, the rules, um, I, I'm still feeling again, like I'm not getting the emails that are being sent to everybody. So if we could just make sure that I'm added onto it, I would really appreciate it. Okay, and I'm pretty darn sure that I got you those, uh, but I'll make sure that you get it again. Um, the agenda, though, for right now is as is up here. Um, so there would be a after the discussion of uh, payment bills, accountants report, supervisors report. Jordan uh, Tukes, director of Food Pantry, would do a presentation. Presentation from Terry Caraballo, um, director of senior services, about Mona Me. Um, staff reports. Does either committee want to give a report? Um, or anything it's from not for not for employment personnel this time. Um, no, I don't think so. Okay. Um, Discussion and proposal of the budget from Lyle Township. So I'm ex assuming that there's probably a discussion that you want to have, or do you not, uh, Trustee Robinson? Um, I'll check with the other. Let's leave it there. Okay. I'll check with the other trustees and see. Uh, because I know you uh, and the trustee guys moved this meeting where right. we forwarded, and there were two things that were added to that, um, um, having to do with the mental health board funding as well as an additional piece of software. Okay. Additional piece of software. So. I'll, I'll send some notes to you on that. So much. Yeah, yeah. Did, did anything else change from the last meeting to, okay. You, and you were, so those two things we added, everything, nothing's okay. changed since then. So um, thank you, then we'll keep that on there. The budget hearing for proposed 2024 uh, budget in, from the road district, um, discussion and actions on the proposed budget from the road district. That's what was asked to be on here from Ed. Discussion. He, sent an email. he did, yeah. He sent an email with that because that needs to be its own meeting here, all the public hearing. Oh, he wants so to, we have to stop the. Well, well, I thought his email said seven o'clock, and, and if you if began your meeting at seven, that his meeting would have to be okay. I will make that happen. No, no, he that. published it for seven thirty because that's what time our meetings uh, always were. Okay, so I'll put this at the start. How about this? No, it doesn't work that way because um, he put it, posted it in the, published it in the paper being 7.30. So it's 7.30, that meeting has to happen. Okay. okay. So we have to stop our meeting okay. or rescind or whatever you want to do. When did we change meeting? Didn't, right? Was it meeting always? times? Yeah. No, we Was it never, 7.30. 7.30. So so I, this changed, is a, I changed that. I that was a. Type I apologize. On I will be. I, I will pull back because I saw seven o'clock there. It was originally. I it was a typo. So thank you. I'm got it. Got sure it. Then I would is, put them to the top, right? Right. Sorry so I'll about put that. Them at the very top. Yeah. I didn't know. Well, I think it's a separate meeting too. We have to gab, gavel in his meeting, and then. Gavel. Okay, then I'm gonna take this off, and we'll we'll make that the separate meeting. Right. Um, I'm just gonna highlight this and make sure. I Get that. Um, then below there, discussion of final actions on the overpayment and underpayment of elected officials. So trying to get that um, taken care of. Um, discussion and possible action on um, resolution to purchase pantry soft. Um, and so that's the food pantry software. Discussion and possible action on purchasing one me software. Discussion and possible action on resigning the lease, re-signing, not resigning, re-signing the lease for 2121 Arden Unit B with new owners. Um, there's, we've been told that there's new owners. Um, the assessor forwarded the contract. There needs to be a um, discussion um, about that. The assessor believes that we need to, um, that there's some legal changes that are important, and I think we need to discuss those. So um, that's the that's the building that he's in. Did did assessor Trebridge say we need to resign a lease because the new buy the new buyers you sorry new owners of the building 
buy the building with a lease currently yes. attached. Yes. And so that's what I thought um, as well. And so again, I was surprised to get the lease that was signed in 2021 sent to me to sign again. Okay. Um, and I also know that that we can't, um, that there's been um, there's been a lot of discussion about this unit for years. We tried to buy it. We didn't, we don't, you, the only way we could have bought it was if there was a town hall, um, a successful town hall in which the, that was on the agenda. We didn't do that at any time. Um, so, and we, we did obviously have the right of first refusal, but we didn't exercise any, we, we, we would have had to put that on the agenda, right? Um, so, so I think, however we want to word that, your Dana, do you think that needs to be rewarded differently? Discussion, impossible action on. Yeah, I, because my understanding, I'm looking for the document that you sent me. My understanding is that um, because the new buyer takes it subject to the lease, um, I thought it was something they just needed for their financing um, reform that they were. So let me, let me find that email because I, I don't have it right here and, and I'll shoot you an email about it. Everything listed out, yes. um, all the, you know, and all your, um, all your possessions, you know, that, uh, and everything that should be uh, surrounding and you have to sign off on it. Maybe, I don't, it's you in know. The, it's in the packet already. Okay. So you'll see the estoppel on the certificate. Well, I'll put the original contract, the original lease, in the packet, I wasn't sure if anything needed to be redacted, your Dana, or or could I just put it online on the website? The original lease, the only thing to redact would be signatures. Everything else on the original lease, that's a public document. So if you want to redact the signatures, because those are frequently, you know, because of identity theft concerns, really, but everything else on the lease um, is public. Um, I'm not seeing in the, and maybe I'm in the wrong file folder, I'm not seeing the, the estoppel. I did. So, okay, so I sent it to you, your Dana. Okay, okay, okay. I'm sorry. I'm looking in the wrong spot. Just, I'm sorry. I apologize about that. Um, did, was that the wording that Assessor Trebridge wanted for that, or or is that too specific? Do you want to just do discussion and possible action on uh, surrounding the lease of twenty one twenty one? Yeah. So discussion you know on possible I mean? action on the lease for twenty one twenty one Ogden Unit B Lyle with new owners. Is that all right? Yep. Okay. Yeah, I think that's because it's not it's not a new lease. The the document they ask you to sign is essentially to to assist during the closing. Um. So that's yeah. It, it it's not a new lease. I don't. I wouldn't call it that. Um. I'm trying to find it so I can see the title of the document, but I, I just I'm not pulling it up right now. I apologize that I didn't have it ready. General enough that anything with the lease. Uh, discussion and possible action on the lease for 2121 and I mean, with or without the new owners, I think that's general enough that you could do whatever you want about that. Okay, we're just trying to discuss it, yeah. make sure that we're keeping it and going along and not changing anything. And right. we didn't try, we're not trying to buy it right now. We're not, we, we don't, we um, discussion on the following job descriptions. Director of the food pantry, bus driver, receptionist, and office assistant. Um, some of those positions changed by these discussions. It's a small team. I think that we should take that off completely mm -hmm. surprise because I, I won't have time discussion. between now and, and the 14th to discuss anything with the employees. Okay. With these new descriptions. Okay. Uh, so that's taken off. Um, uh do you and you would still like them i'm assuming still so the the other job description will be sent thank you um uh your way then uh the next uh, minutes of the meetings and extra space to do a special on while oh yeah anyway, thank you <laughs> any other um and I'll proofread this because there's taking out a few pieces. Is there anything added more or anything you want? Okay. Okay. Just wanted to make sure that was done. All right. Uh, is that the end of new business? Um, reports of elected officials? Anything? Anybody? Nothing to report. Nothing from me. 
move forward. All right, number 13, review and approval of minutes. Apologies that they only got sent or there. You probably see them for the first time now. I just wanted to put them in the packet. The next meeting, I didn't know I had that ready for this meeting. I had seen, and and the, we are not a voting body. We are not voting today. Ah. Correct. So, well, the, well, can't they be, can't they be, your Dana, can't they be approved at the, at this meeting? Yeah, yeah. So the, so committee meeting, it, the committee needs to approve its own minutes. Got it. Okay. All right, I make so, a motion. To fix. Yeah. From the 5-17-2023 Personnel Committee Lyle Township Board Meeting. I second. Thank you. Yeah. And then executive session, we don't need it. We won't oh, I'm sorry. You, need a, you need a vote on the minutes, sorry. <laughs> or do I call it? I call I it. it. I call it. Uh, Trustee Page. Yes. Uh, Trustee McGovern. Yes. Or Trustee Robinson. Yes. Uh, Supervisor Hewitt. Yes. You're not. Um, okay, Dirk Pollitz, do you? No, you're not on, right? Okay, okay, thank you. And executive session, we don't need it. Anybody want to make a motion to adjourn? Or do you all want to stay? I'll make a motion to adjourn. Um, Second. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you all.